Hello, and welcome to my forehead, which is where you are at the minute. You're strapped to my forehead. Um, today I'm going to go for a, a, a POV vlog, a point of view vlog. Um, I've seen it on YouTube a fair bit, so I thought I'd copy it. But I thought I'd try and do a informative video. So a video that's giving you some tips and information and help on driving. Now, let's set off while we're doing this. Let's make sure it's all clear before we go. Now, I used to be a police officer. I was a police officer for seven years and during my time as a police officer I was a response driver which meant I had to go into a three week response driving course. Now this three week course it changed my driving quite a lot um, for the better. I learned a lot of things on that driving course. Basically what it teaches you to do is it teaches you to drive as quickly and as safely as possible. So not, not tearing around like a lunatic, but driving fast, making progress, but in a safe manner. Now, I still drive, I'd probably say 90% how I was taught, I still drive like that today. I did keep a lot of it. Now what they teach you is, they teach you to drive to the system of car control. Now in this video today, hopefully I'll, I'll sort of pass on some of that information to you guys. And maybe, you know, you might pick up on some of it and you might find it useful and you might incorporate it into some of your day-to-day -day driving. But basically, the system of car control is broken down into a certain amount of aspects. Now, if you remember IPSCA, IPSCA, so information, position, speed, gear, accelerate. That's, that's how it all works, IPSCA. So break it down for you. So information, so when you're driving along a road, you're looking around everywhere, you're scanning the horizon, you're looking at hazards, so you're, you're taking in information. So that's the information part. Now from that information, you will change the position, which is the next part, position. So you'll change the position of your car to negotiate the hazards that you've gathered from all that information. Now once you've done that, <clears throat> you're gonna wanna get the right speed to, to negotiate that hazard. So you bring the car down to the right speed. Once you're at a suitable speed to make your way around the corner or whatever hazard it is, you then want to get into the correct gear for that speed that you're traveling at. And when you're in that gear, you then accelerate. So basically it's breaking down all these certain elements so you're not doing it all at the same time. Now most of you guys, I used to do it, you come up to a corner like this, going quite fast, you'd be on the brakes and you'd be going down through the gears at the same time. That's what you call a brake gear overlap. Now, in the police we were taught not to do that because you've got more than one thing going on at one time and it destabilizes the car. So that's part of the system. So let's just say we're doing 70 mile an hour, 60, 70 mile an hour, approaching a corner. We've taken in the information, we've seen the corners there. We've got the positioning of our vehicle. We're in the right place on the road for that corner. We get on the brakes until we get to the right speed for the corner. We then come off the brake and we go into the selected gear we need and then we accelerate out of the corner. That is the most stable way you can take a corner. It might not be the fastest, but it is the safest way. <clears throat> and you can still carry a lot of speed. Now, another main element of, of the system of car control is that you need to make sure you can always stop within the distance you can see to be clear. So as long as you can always stop within the distance you can see to be clear, you're fine. You're going to always be able to stop before you get to that hazard. If you follow that rule, you can't go wrong. I mean, look at this road, for instance. We can see quite a way up. So we, I know I can still maintain this speed and stop and still, and still stop safely within that distance I can see up ahead. But as the road curves round now, that that point, the point you can see decreases. So you've got both curves. They come to a point where they meet, and you can no longer see any further around that corner that becomes your limit point. <clears throat> now when you're going around corners, you need to focus on that limit point and, main, and adjust your speed to that limit point so you can always stop within that limit point. And if you do that, you can take any corner and not risk going too fast and coming off the road. So what we'll do now, I'm gonna head out to quite a good driving road and I'm gonna go through commentary as to what I'm doing and how I'm driving to the system. 
So right, we're doing 30, we've got the national speed limit signs up ahead. When we get to those, accelerating third. Now we can see the crest of that hill, we don't know what's over the top of that, so just approach it cautiously. You can see now up ahead, see the road quite far, we can now accelerate fully. We've got a straight bit of road, positioning the car into the centre of the road. There's no other vehicles coming, so I know it's safe, I'm giving myself more margin of error either side. Now I see a sign there for an S-Bend, so we've got a left-hand bend first. That limit point is pretty much in front of us. It's just opening up now, down into fourth, take the corner nicely, and we're going around to the right-hand side now, so there's nothing coming the other way. Just trim that line slightly. Another left-hand bend, just push, positioning myself out slightly so I can see more around the corner, and it's opening up, and we can accelerate again. In fourth gear, staying in fourth, no need to change. See, we're going to come into a village shortly. See the, the trees and some buildings. So we're going to go on the brakes now. Reduce our speed down to 30. So I'm on the brakes, still in fourth, still in fourth, down to 30, off the brakes and into third. So no brake gear overlap. It's a lovely British autumn day, by the way, today, which makes it even better. Roads are nice and dry. Speed's increasing up to 40. And also, we need to be holding the, the steering wheel in the correct position as well. I forgot to mention that. So you want to be, you want to have your hands at sort of 10 to 2 like this, with your thumbs facing up. If you have your thumbs like that, if you have your thumbs gripped like that, if the steering is to all of a sudden be snatched for any reason, you've got a chance of breaking your thumbs. So we always hold the, the wheel like this. Now back out onto a national speed limit sign. We'll be on the brakes, just come off, just follow the limit point round, it's opening up. Just accelerating out now, can still see the limit point. Full acceleration. Now it's a bit of a blind crest here, so I'm just going to ease off. There's a sign there to say it's a sharp right hand bend, which I can see. So on the brakes, still in third, on the brakes, on the brakes. And off the brakes, into second. Take the bend and accelerate out the corner. Just position the car into the centre of the road, there's no other vehicles coming. I've got a full view now, I can see at the top of the road there, I've got some form of chicane coming up and a sign to indicate that. So we've got a left hand bend first after this slight right. So on the brakes, just so I can see the road open up again, that's it, and back on the accelerator. Sharp left on the brakes, on the brakes, on the brakes, down into third, and just accelerate around the corner, and fully accelerate out, up the hill. Got a van there coming the other way, causing us no issues. Of it. I can see the hedge line, the hedge line isn't turning sharply, so I know there's no sharp bend right there. We've got a sign here to say there's a left hander and a sign and a chevron there. So on the brakes, just into third. Leaves on the road, they could cause issues. Now uh, accelerate down the hill, got a good view up there. A nice clear view, just trim this corner. We've got a church spire there indicating we're going to be coming into another village. Just take it easy as you go up the hill. We've got a right hand bend, this is uh, tightening up now, so on the brakes. And we're coming into another restricted zone, another 40. Now, I'm not sure if you can see because of the sunlight, but this road, this is a great little bit of road, this is. It opens up and you can see the road for a good couple of miles. So it goes down the hill, round the left, and up the hill over to that direction there. So we can, I can see no other cars coming, so I'm going to fully accelerate down this hill. Taking in all the information, I've got a, I've got a corner coming up here. It's going to ease off slightly. Just trim in there, trim into the inside there little crest but I know it goes to the left because I've already seen it so it's going to stay in fourth just trim that line and into fifth gear as we go up the hill. We've got a sharp right hander coming up so I'm going to come off the accelerator onto the brakes onto the brakes onto the brakes in fifth gear till I'm at a suitable speed off there and into second gear. Accelerate out the bend. We've got a sh an easy right hander coming up here so just trim that line followed by a left hander. Just gonna pull back in this lane just so I don't have any head-on collisions. Just making sure I can always see and stop within that distance I can see to be clear. Just on the brakes, just watching that limit point. And it's opening up now, and we've got a straight bit of road. So I'm gonna get up behind this car, try and keep a sort of a two second gap. Keep the view clear, get it too close up behind it. He's going left, no indications. Now this is a tight bit of road, it's quite difficult to overtake, so you've got to plan this overtake quite carefully. So I can see, I'm just going to pull out and have a look. I can see it's clear, but there's a left-hand bend, so I can't see around that left-hand bend, so I'm going to pull back in. It's not a safe place to overtake. Now the road's opened up nicely, I'm just going to pull out, 
you should know I'm there and we're gonna pass. Check our mirrors and pull back in. So yeah, that's um hopefully I explained that okay. Let's pull in here. So that's how I still drive to the system. Now I might not be quite as polished as what I used to be, but um I try my best and I do find that it helps. It helps a great deal. Because it's a say it's a fail-safe way of driving. If you try if you stick to that, providing no one comes off the road coming towards you and hits you head on or anything like that, it's it's a fail-safe driving technique. Now if you're on a track you're not gonna use it because it's gonna on a track you do break gear overlap because it is a faster way of driving and it's a more it's a safer environment but out on the roads I recommend that you drive like you try and drive like this or try and put some of it into your daily driving so if you found this video useful please comment like subscribe again as I say I'm not trying to be some sort of like professional driver but I thought I'd just pass on some of the knowledge that I've got onto you guys